So who here thinks life is difficult? Okay. Only a few hands. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's really amazing. When I came to the training, I thought life was difficult. Um, it was really in a state of intense frustration trying to figure out my life, trying to figure out which decision to make, where to live in the world, who to have as a partner, what kind of food to eat, what kind of exercise to do, what sort of extracurricular activities to be involved in, and how all of this would integrate into the world and provide benefit and create as little harm as possible. So I was trying to base all of my decisions on all of my ideas and all of the thoughts that I had and all the emotions that I had and all the sensations that I had. And I just was, it was like going around in circles. So I would spend time just writing in my diary and drawing, trying to envision my perfect life. I sat and then tried to envision the perfect life. What, did, what would that look like? And then I would go to all these people trying to get advice, sage advice on how I could live the, a beneficial life where I wasn't caught up in being selfish. And uh, it just none of it really worked. I just never felt confident. I never felt confident. Completely confident. I'll put it that way. So it wasn't like my life was completely miserable, but I wanted to make the most appropriate choices. You know, there just felt like such a responsibility to make wise decisions that would be of benefit to myself and others. And then when I came to Balance View and I met and I met the founder and I met the training and I met the community, all of that started to fall in place very naturally. I was introduced to something about me that was effortless, that was already aligned with reality, that was already beneficial by nature. And what I was introduced to was my own open intelligence, the same open intelligence that lies within everyone. Open intelligence is the intelligence of the universe. We have access to it when we rely on short moments of open intelligence. The introduction to open intelligence, just stop thinking for a moment and what remains? A sense of alertness, clarity, cognizance, the innate power to be of benefit to all, the desire to be of benefit to all regardless of whatever data stream you experience. Data streams are simply anything that's streaming through your perception or even non-perceived thoughts, emotions, sensations. All of this is inseparable from open intelligence. It's just a stream of data. So in my life, the reason I was just so feeling it was so complicated was I was trying to make sense out of fleeting descriptions. One moment feeling confident and on top of the world and energetic, like I'd had all the ducks in a row. And then the next morning, feeling like a complete loser and like nothing made sense. Like I was in the wrong place, I had the wrong partner, I had the wrong choice of career, the wrong choice of school and the list just went on and on and on. <laughs> so it was such a relief to just recognize all of that as just data streaming through my own lived reality. And starting to recognize that there was, yeah, this innate desire to be of benefit to all, regardless of what my data were screaming. So for me, decision-making has become so much easier now. But it took practice of relying on the Four Mainstays of Balance View. The first thing I tried out was letting all of my data be exactly as it is, without trying to rearrange it, make it look into anything else. So short moments of complete relaxation. Short moments of letting descriptions be exactly as they were. And we can do that throughout our day. When anything comes up that seems distracting, simply let it be as it is. 
get to know what is the basis of the data stream that's shining forth. What is the essence of that data? What is the data really telling us? And the only way to know that is to instinctively realize open intelligence as the basis of it. It is the beneficial liveliness of open intelligence. <laughs> so it's, that's hard to see with um, <clears throat> negative data in the beginning. So then for me I had to rely on a trainer, somebody who had gone before me, somebody who had tested out letting all of their data streams be exactly as they are. And um, you know, the trainer just shines the light, the bright light of open intelligence on all our data. They illuminate everything for us if we're open to that relationship. You know, it requires a certain openness to the trainer to really open up all relationships. And whether or not that comes about quickly or gradually, that's, that's also fine. So I started to gradually get to know my trainer, to rely on him for his support. Somebody to empower me when I felt very distracted again, trying to make decisions based on ideas and belief systems and the data that seemed to be below the radar. I started to see that you know, all data, whether they're positive, negative, and neutral, are simply inseparable from open intelligence. In short moments, we instinctively realize that data streams shining forth inseparably from open intelligence, just like heat is inseparable from fire, or wetness is inseparable from water. So I could allow myself short moments of relaxation, not needing to figure it out in that moment, knowing that I had a trainer to rely on, coupled with my short moments, and then participating in the trainings of Balanced View, having written material reading text, writing the text, listening to the downloads. Complete confirmation of who we actually are. Complete confirmation that data are inseparable from open intelligence and they pose no threat or promise. So this really helped me to recognize things like antidotes also as open intelligence. I mean the antidotes are simply data streams. They're data of open intelligence. Uh, before the training, I was so rigid about my antidotes that it was just painful if I, I made a plan that I would not eat sugar for one year. <laughs> and if I broke that promise, then I was so hard on myself. And I just thought, wow, a year's worth of a commitment down the drain. And for something so simple as, you know, that, I mean, you could, it could apply to any commitment that we've made. And, Yeah. It's just so much easier to let it just be as it is. We naturally know how to take care of ourselves. There's less and less the judgment of, is this right and is this wrong? More and more we spontaneously know what to say and how to act in each situation that will be of benefit to all. And making the spontaneous decisions like you have to come here rather than go somewhere else, is, it's a great demonstration that you're riding the right wave. You are where you need to be right now with whatever data stream is going on for you. It's the perfect opportunity to get to know yourself as intimate open intelligence, intimate powerful open intelligence. You know, it's, we find that there are no wrong decisions anymore either. It's like if you make the wrong decision, you're already in the next moment anyway. So all you, all you have is this here and now. So if you've made a decision that you're not comfortable with, you can choose to either indulge, avoid, or replace what has happened, or you can let it be as it is and carry on with the support of the Four Mainstays to see what could be the next step. So that allows you to navigate. It's like you do have the vantage of the top of the mountain. Even if you don't know what's coming next, we never really know what's coming next. Even if you went to the best, best fortune teller in the world, they can't predict everything. Would you want to go to the fortune teller every five minutes and say, tell me what's happening in the next five minutes? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? 
you actually start to have confidence in yourself as open intelligence. Not in this confidence of building up more of a personal identity based on having the best data and having no negative data. Confidence that you are open intelligence, that you have access to open intelligence at any given time. It doesn't necessarily mean you know yeah, not even knowing an answer to your problem is perfect. You actually just know that that's another data stream of open intelligence and that you start to have confidence that a solution will arise. And if that one doesn't work, then there are many more options. So what I'm trying to explain is just life becomes so spontaneous, adventurous. We live it for the benefit of all, regardless of how we are thinking, feeling, and what the emotions are telling us. And then the fourth mainstay that I really treasure is the community. People all over the world who are interested in giving up being selfish. And actually that, when you, re when you have this context of the benefit of all, that does include ourselves. So selfishness is subsumed into open intelligence. And then we actually take better care of ourselves. That's what I've seen in my experience. A, um, a deep self-care that was not there before. The relationship with myself, the most important relationship. And that has come about due to opening up the relationship with my trainer, opening up the relationship with open intelligence as my identity, opening up the relationship with the trainings, actually utilizing them on a day-to-day -day basis, and opening up the relationship with the community. So all of the mainstays are like four solid pillars that hold you, embrace you. That's the confidence that we want, not as personal identities that need to protect ourselves and need to prove ourselves, that need to go about life in a lonely way. <coughs> So yeah, you've just put all this into practice. Short moments of letting everything be as it is. I identify open intelligence that is clear like a clear sky. Your mind clear like a clear sky. Even if the data are raging, at the basis of everything, open intelligence is crystal clear. The more you emphasize that, the more you recognize that. When you have low energy, open intelligence is crystal clear. It's the source of the energy. Energy in the body is no different than open intelligence. It's a data stream of open intelligence. Whether we have coffee or not, open intelligence is pristine, wide open. It's what fuels you. And then all of this together really allows an intimacy with people that we hadn't noticed before. Not some snuggly, fluffy intimacy with everyone. It can include that too, but it's just like all included. It's not like we're all laying next to each other and just hugging each other all day long. And we all feel nice and warm and like we don't experience anything negative anymore. I mean, that's just unrealistic. But we start to see that no matter how we're feeling, that even the negative data are just pure benefit in and of themselves when we let them be as they are. That's the only way we discover that. So I just at one point had to say, okay, I'm still giving an independent meaning to all the negative things that I experience. I just need to practice letting them be as they are. Committing to stop indulging and saying, I don't like this because it comes up again and again until it doesn't. And then like this intimacy I was saying, you just, you look around, it's like you know people. Even if they're not relying on open intelligence, you, you know them, you know where they're at. Personally, I just find more openness to people. And, um, just only wanting the best for them.
but you know people need role models too they need to see other people who are living as open intelligence rather than a collection of learned belief systems and assumptions and so just yeah carry on as you are you can be that role model you already are you know you probably already are affecting them more than you think you are maybe they're just not admitting how much they want to come to the training and just I'm not going there they're a bunch of hippies or they're a cult or they're this or they're that and but all that softens. I mean, when you start to see the results of this training, it's who cares what other people say, think? We know what the results are, and then people, more and more people are attracted to it.